In this video, we'll be taking a look at one of the more foundational types of oscillators called a A-stable multivibrator. I switch the power on here, you can see that the light starts flashing on and off. And that's being done entirely through the capacitors, the transistors, and those four resistors up there. So right down here is the schematic for the circuit. And fortunately, it's more simple than it looks. Now, if you pay attention to the layout of the circuit, you can see that the circuit is just like a mirror image. So everything that's over here is just flipped over this way and copied over here. And that's exactly how it's done on the circuit over here, where you can see that these resistors and capacitors and the transistors are all lined up in the same way. And the only thing that's separating them are these two yellow wires, which connect the two sides of the circuit together. One thing to note about this circuit is that the values in here, the, the values on this schematic right here are the actual values on this board. But if you, for some reason, don't have the, exactly these components or can't find them, uh, you can replace these values with other value uh, components. And basically all it will do is it will change the characteristics of the signal coming out of this. So the, the light mark might turn on faster or it might turn off faster, uh, but it should still work otherwise. And also, if uh, you might have noticed, we're using electrolytic capacitors, because those are what's included with the kit. These are 10 microfarad polarized electrolytic capacitors. And for this type of circuit, this is not usually a capacitor you would use for this, because it will be going into negative voltage. But fortunately, it's not enough to damage these capacitors in any noticeable way. So we can get away with it with this, with this circuit. So I'll go ahead and unwire everything. And here's the components you'll be needing. Uh, you'll need to have two 100 kilo ohm resistors, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, two of the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, LED, about a one kilo ohm resistor, and these transistors here. Now these transistors can be a little bit hard to read, but you can see right there that's a 2N2222A, and your kit should have two of these. These are standard NPN bipolar transistors. So we're going to take the transistor and have the flat portion facing away from us, and I'm going to put this in row B with the third pin of the third lead of the transistor going to row 1. And take the other transistor and I'll also move it on to, again, column, uh, row B and the third pin on row, uh, column 10, so like that. Now we can wire in the capacitors, and for the sake of simplicity, or consistency, uh, I'll just say that the positive of the capacitors is going to be going to the collector of the transistor. So you can see that the and this end of the capacitor is connected to this end of the, the uh, transistor. So we can take our mic 10 microfarad capacitor, and the collector is going to be the first pin right here, and put it between like that. So the long lead is going to the first pin, and then the shorter lead, the negative lead, is going to an empty row right now, or empty column. And the same thing for the other side. Next we can put in the resistors, and it might seem a little bit more complicated, but we can just follow the schematic and it will tell us exactly where these resistors need to go. So you can see here that we have the 10K resistor on the positive side of the capacitor and the 100K on the negative side of the capacitor. So we can take our first 10K, and on the positive side of the capacitor, we can move it from the positive rail to the same row as the uh, first pin there of the transistor and the positive of the capacitor. And that's exactly how it shows in this diagram where you have the resistors connected to the, resi the capacitor and the transistor. And then the same for the other side. Just like that.
Now for the 100 case, they go from the positive rail to the negative end of the capacitor. So we can move, take our positive rail there and put it on the same row column as the negative of our capacitor. It's like that. And the same for the other side. So you can see these circuits are basically just the same on each side. So as long as you got one of them right, you can look and see the other one is the same. Now all we have left is just to wire in the different parts of the circuit. In this case, there's four connections that need to be made. So you can see the negative terminal of the capacitor on one side is connected to the gate of the transistor on the other side. Not the same as true in reverse. So what we can do is take one of our jumper wires and take the negative terminal from the capacitor and wire it up to the other side for the gate or the center pin of the transistor. And the same on the other side, negative to the gate. It's like that. Finally, we need to take some jumper wire and connect the emitter of the transistor to ground on each side. So it's the this third pin here to ground, and the third pin to ground. And that's it. That's the uh, fully functioning circuit. Um, the problem is that if you plug it into power, you won't see anything happen because there's no outward indicator of anything actually going on. So the oscillator is running right now, but we obviously can't see it. So what I didn't show in this schematic is I added in a resistor or a, a resistor and an LED. Specifically, I added them in right here. So we have 1K going to LED, and then to ground. So it doesn't matter what side of the circuit this is on, but just for the for this video, I'm putting it on this side. So this shared ra rail between the resistor, the capacitor, and the uh, collector of this transistor is going to be going to this resistor here. So what I'll do, I'll take an extra piece of jumper wire and that shared pin is right down here. It's the, this row right here. I'm just going to put the signal from that off to the side here. And then I'm gonna take a one kilo ohm resistor, go from that wire to, from one side to the other side of the breadboard. And then an LED from here to ground. Okay, I'll turn the light off, turn the power back on, and you can see the circuit is now lighting up. If it's not lighting up, you can try taking out this uh, wire for the LED and just setting it directly to 5 volts and make sure that the board is being powered properly. You also want to make sure that none of the components have uh, popped out of their place. Uh, if any of these components come out, the circuit will stop working.